What is going on guys? It is Dunk back for another video. Whew, Bitcoin, man. We got a big move coming. The question is which way is it going, right? So I'm still in the bear camp personally. There's just so much writing on the walls, uh, but there is one catalyst we need to take a look at today. And we're going to go through it here pretty thoroughly. Uh, look at the bull case, look at the bear case. But starting off right here on the daily with good old Bitcoin and market cipher B. Uh, this is the, the structure, right? So overall, we know what this is. This is a rising wedge. These have about a 69%, 70% chance to break to the downside. You know, they come down into support, hit resistance, support, resistance, support, resistance. And as this gets tighter, buying opportunities just kind of dry up because the assets typically oversold and we typically get a swing to the downside, right? Uh, that's how they work traditionally. That's what uh, the retail pattern typically is telling you. Uh, can you break out of this? Yeah. I mean, it's all, uh, it's all probability, right? I am not in the bull camp until we get one of those infamous God candles breaking above 30 K. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's these candles right here. So this $20,000 shot you know, that ran all the way up uh, to that $28,000 in just two or three days. But that first candle picked us up you know, about 7% or $1,500 evaluation in Bitcoin before, you know, the, the daily candle closes. If we get that in to and pass that 30K mark, I will be in uh, back in camp uh, bull. But right now, we're really just not seeing that. Uh, if we do zoom in here quite a bit, I'm just trying to get in. This is where we got yesterday, right? So, uh, we had a 4% pump, and, and that's, well, let's see here. So from Monday the 7th uh, till yesterday at close, or yesterday in New York, we pumped about 5.21%. 5 so it's a nice pump. It's a good swing long. Uh, positions are closed out, and we are back short. Uh, still some positions open in altcoins that we weren't really talking about. On the daily here, we do have this big liquidity pool sitting at the top here that is going to provide some resistance as well as this trend line we have now forming to the downside. So if we can break through 30K with one of those bullish candles, you know, it needs to look like this, you know, with a wick up into this 31.5, maybe a quick correction and then a continuation to the upside. But we need those God candles, right? We need those big, heavy spot buying. Uh, it's coming candles to start to print uh, so far we just don't have that we are still bing bonging around in this range uh, you can call this a cup and handle on the daily so here is your cup formation with your neckline and here is the handle starting to form itself out and uh, if we break down here you know we're coming down to this trend line we've been waiting super patiently uh, for Bitcoin to meet this daily trend line to hopefully get a reaction to the upside. I want to tap uh, this, you know, daily close. They call that a naked POC or a naked point of control. It is a point in the price action that has not been tested yet. Uh, I would like to test that. If it fails, we continue down out of this structure that has been building up for, uh, you know, forever since the beginning of the year now, and we get a sizable correction. And from there, you know, we start looking at some lower levels. Uh, the bull case to the upside is this is that infamous cup and handle formation. So the cup, the handle, and let's just take a look at those bullish targets real quick. Uh, off the daily uh, drawings here, uh, you have an immediate break of just this falling wedge right here. So you have a falling wedge and a rising wedge, uh, a falling wedge with inside a rising wedge. The distance in this Median here, extrapolating to the upside, gives us a measured move back into that 31,500 zone, uh, which would be uh, pretty easy to achieve with a little bit of volume, right? That would certainly make me a little more bullish. But again, we have, you know, double top formations here yet again. Tapping on 30K over the last couple months has not been unheard of. And we potentially give market makers a little bit more ammo to run short and fill up those bags, right? Uh, as of right now, we are printing a uh, end of trend flag, but we did that as here as well on market cipher A. That little triangle typically marks the end of a move. 
and we get a little bit of a retracement. So up here we retraced, that looks about like 8% maybe. Uh, we traced 9.5% there. Over here we did retrace one more time. Now that retraced us about 13%, and we're printing one right now on the current daily candle that just opened. Okay, so we got about 24 hours, 23 and a half hours yet for that candle to close. Uh, if it does come up here and retest one more time, uh, it may, right? You know, we tend to not leave any of these naked points of control on the chart as we swing back and forth. So if it comes up here and tests this body close at about 29.775 and rejects to the downside, um, I would be looking for lower levels. If we cannot, by tomorrow, break a higher high above 30,250, uh, I think that's the high for the week, right? Uh, you see we are in these gaps again. We broke out, came up, rejected, closed below the current daily value very high. And rules of, well, we can call it the POC here, right? So as we zoom out, those levels kind of change. Let's just get firm levels here. There we go. So the value very high right here, it keeps switching up on us. Got to get the right price action in here so we can see all of the chart. There we go. All right. So we do have the POC or that point of control. Uh, we do have the value very high up here, but once we lose those levels, law of these ranges tend to stick us down to the value very low, which is sitting at about 26,300. Uh, that is breaking down out of the current structure and testing this lower node right here instead of this node right, right where we had it there. Whoop. So that would be this node right here instead of this guy right here. So instead of 28.3, which I think we can probably get a bounce off of if we do touch this trend line, uh, we may be testing something lower at 26.300. Uh, the market has been running out of gas. Uh, we have these little puffs of energy and nitrous that just kind of shoot us up and then dwindle down uh, like we're having some engine problems. And uh, things, it's just tough, man. Uh, we got these bullish ETF news. Let's see here. I did have that pulled up here. All right. So the SEC decision on Bitcoin spot ETF is expected by this week. Uh, the SEC has a deadline to respond within 45 days of the application being filed. A delay is widely expected to be announced. Galaxy CEO uh, Mike Novogratz said that the approval could be within four to six months. I tend to add uh, myself on the side of caution with these approvals. Um, that they take a little longer than expected, and a four to six months delay in this would move us right towards the halving and the proper market structure for a continued bull run uh, with the cycle itself for Bitcoin. With that said, it is very, very important to note if we get an announcement of an ETF approval, the second that happens, Bitcoin is going to start printing those God candles. Hop on board, pick up your spot, pick up your longs, and just ride it out. Make sure you're using stop losses and all those good natures if you're doing leverage. Uh, speaking of leverage and trading, we do all of our, well, and spot for that matter, we do all of our trading over on MXC Global. Uh, I'm going to run a quick ad for them here, and we'll be right back with continuation in the video here. What's going on, DeFi Rebels? If you're looking to trade crypto hassle-free, MXC Global is your ultimate solution. With MXC, you get a secure and user-friendly platform featuring a wide range of digital assets for trading, benefit from ultra-fast transactions, low fees, and top-notch security protocols to safeguard your assets. The platform offers advanced tools and charts to enhance your trading experiences, plus MXC's dedicated customer support 24-7. QR code in the top right-hand corner of your screen and link below. All right, guys, I want to be super clear. If this gets approved, we will pump, okay? It will be a huge catalyst. You have some crazy market analysis, you know, analysis out there saying we'll pump to 148K Bitcoin before the halving due to ETF approvals, all that jazz. It, it could get crazy if it gets approved, right? Um, hopping back over to the charts, Uh, taking a look at these higher time frames on market site for B, we did have that bullish divergence here on the daily, which did give us a pump to the upside. We do have these trend lines now that we are following uh, on the daily chart in the four hour time frames. So the bull divergence versus the bear divergence. This next move is going to be big, but there are so many mixed signals in the market. The mixed signals 
uh, it could be twofold, right? The pump could be coming from anticipation and front running of the BT, uh, the BTC price. Uh, there also, we could have pumped a little bit due to the Mooney's downgrade on the United States' credit rating, um, which is shitty within itself, but we got more debt than we're making. Uh, so that stuff makes sense. Uh, there's seven uh, nations right now that are rated better for credit than the United States. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with... Um, it, I'm not going to get political. Anyway, so what the bad news here on this daily chart, this VWAP is starting to cut down sharply on us here. You can see it. It is tough to see. I apologize. But that yellow is now pointing down. It's curving straight towards the downside, looking for that zero line. If that does come crossing back down through um, our zero line here, it's going to pull price action down, right? On the two-day chart here, uh, we did get that bullish divergence as well, but the money flow looks like dog, right? It looks terrible. It is moving to the downside here. Uh, that's really my biggest indicator that we could get pulled down here uh, on the intraweek time frame here. Three day is looking to print that red, uh, that green dot as well. Let's make sure that didn't get confirmed. And I just I'm on the wrong candle. It is not confirmed. So 23 hours and 25 minutes to approve that green dot on the three day. Uh, let's take a look at the four day and money flow looks like it's coming up with the VWAP, but that could do one of, this is still three day. You know, we could do one of these infamous VWAP flops and it comes back to the downside. If not, that could be the catalyst to run us up even higher. Okay. So four day and the five day are also printing those green dots. That's the five day. Let's take a look at the four day, four day as is as well. But on the four-day chart, again, it's just not all in confluence. The stochastic RSI is moving to the downside. Uh, on the five-day, it looks like it is doing one of these little flips and coming back down. This is what that looks like right here. We can see it happen. So a little bit of recovery, a little bit of recovery, and it just shot down, right? So stocks on the higher intraweek time frame are, you know, above 50 still, giving us plenty of room uh, to run a turbo red here if we do. You know, it's going to go, right? The weekly bearish divergence is still printed here. It's actually a bearish divergence still on the, oops, still on the stochastic, stochastic, stochastic RSI. We can get that one off the tongue. And money flow is coming up. VWAP's coming up. So again, just, we have a little uh, conflict there for continuation, but the weekly takes time to play out. Okay, uh, I'm more concerned of what happens with this two-day dot, or excuse me, this three-day dot, uh, if that gets approved, and this two-day money flow, if it continues to dig deeper, right? We have not had a daily uh, red wave below our trigger line here at about the 60% median on Cypher B. If it breaks down here and we get one of these things where it breaks through and just tanks, you can see the price action that does come with that. So a deep, deep correction here. Losing my ruler. So that correction was from about this last red dot. So that was a 21% trawl down in Bitcoin. Uh, on that 22 hour, you got to remember, we did print that manipulation X. That does not happen very often. And we have not really paid any, you know, toll, you know, on that daily manipulation yet. You know, every one of these other ones came down a little bit, came down, retested up came down, retested up, retested higher before continuing to the downside, right? Uh, other than that, it's tough, man. It's a tough call. If you're not already in a position, uh, as far as like futures and leverages go, I may be doing some hand sitting right now, uh, not getting into any high leverage plays uh, until we sweep one of these highs or lows again. But if you're doing spot, uh, we talked about the altcoin market bleeding pretty hard, and that was due to what we saw on the total three. Uh, this is the entire market cap minus Bitcoin and Ethereum, and alts are just continuing to bleed out. Uh, it does look like it's gone here now. Oh, it's not gone. So on Heikinashi candles, not regular candles, we are printing a blood diamond on the weekly with a weekly bearish divergence. This is a tough cookie to swallow if you are a bull in the market right now it just looks terrible for all coins right uh, we could get a nice just potentially slow drawdown on all coins here 
down until we get into crypto total three here, uh, Golden Pocket, uh, which would be a drawdown on market cap uh, of about uh, four to five percent. Obviously, some coins would bleed faster than others, but that weekly liquidity like, liquidity pool uh, would match up from the June 23rd dump down here, uh, which is a very very steep drop from where we're at. So that's going to be a drop of about 13.5% on all coins uh, in market cap, right? And if things really start to go, we have some lower levels that I did cover in that video. If you want to hop that up, it was two or three uh, days ago, maybe last Friday or uh, Thursday or Friday. Uh, some of the other things we do need to take a look at would be uh, the DXY. Let's scroll on down to the DXY here. Uh, it is pumping, right? So we have a better trend set up right now for the DXY than Bitcoin. We are in a falling wedge, right? Uh, this is not, this is the opposite of the, the pattern Bitcoin's in. So just to show you, Bitcoin is in a rising wedge, which is bullish price action. But what you get to a top here and you just fall out of it because buying is exhausted. I showed you how that works. It's buy the dip buy the dip price to action strong it's getting tighter reactions are less and then all of a sudden people just start taking profits massively and we get a correction uh i mean i, I think there's potential for 750 dollars eth if you're looking to pick up some eth if we do start swinging to the downside uh how ugly it gets uh, nobody nobody knows i mean the good news is the centralized exchange fud is probably over at this point knock on wood uh, so if we get one of those turbo red events, it's probably not going to be a 30% capitulation like the FTX or Luna issue. I mean, that was a 40% capitulation there uh, off FTX's collapse back in uh, June of 2022. Uh, we all remember watching this just bleed to death as the entire market went to shit. Uh, and then before that, it was Luna and, and, and Gemini and you know whatever else, you know, DCG. Whatever else happened with those over-exhausted, over-leveraged sex players um, in the game. We still have that one potential contagion in the DeFi realm where uh, Curve and Compound and... Uh, woo, what are those other coins? I have them all already over here. Uh, MakerDAO, Compound, Curve, uh, maybe one inch to, to some extent where we have these large players in the DeFi space who have been moving coins around to prevent liquidation uh, on positions. So there is still some le over leveraged players, uh, millionaire players in the space uh, that have been actually responsible enough to, to sell off some assets to stop that from happening. Uh, that was good to see from the Curve Dow uh, creator, owner, whatever you want to call him, that he de-rest his uh, leverage a little bit and paid down some debt. Uh, that is a good thing. But back to the DY, or excuse me, back to the DXY. So Bitcoin in that overall arching daily falling wedge, we do have a minor uh, rising wedge, and then we do have a uh, minor falling wedge in that pattern. If you hop over into the larger DXY pattern, this is the dollar, the US dollar index, the value of the dollar. If this does break up against trend, it's going to run, right? And this is going to take inflation with it. Okay, uh, not joking when I say that. We've had this drawn out here for months, uh, at least uh, since February of last year, saying, hey, look, we are going to probably correct, come down, markets will pump, and then it's going to break the other way again, right? So we had that original drawdown here uh, in February of 2023. We had a nice bounce, a correction for a double bottom, a nice bounce, broke that uh, double bottom and now we're looking to either potentially break out here to the upside or reverse and that if this reverses here at the trend line bitcoin will pump uh, pretty straightforward uh, some of those underlying factors again would be if we just have a credit crisis in the united states with the dollar and inflation bitcoin will probably pump okay if we have a depression economic event bitcoin will probably tank with the rest of the market if we look at some of these actual trade fire let's just take a peek at the dow here real quick uh, da, 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 da. The Dow was down today, 200 points, man. We're, we're just catching all these dead cat bounces. Uh, they have been calling this a melt up. 
Uh, you can see the bottom of the DXY was here. That second bottom of the DXY was here. It did break up a little bit here into a double top. Something like this. Uh, it could melt up even further into a further double top. But if it breaks this, it'll continue to melt up, right? Uh, it'll continue to melt up and Bitcoin will probably go with it. But we do seem to be touching uh, some bigger, stronger uh, reactions here, right? So the daily is looking quite oversold and correcting down. The Dow is actually ready to print a weekly uh, red dot here. Five dots are five days already printing. Three days already confu can confirmed. Two days already confirmed, and, and the one day is coming down, right? Again, you can see a rising wedge here on the Dow. So something like this. You know, a little bit of deviations down here. Actually, you can just, you know, you can actually include those in there if you want. And if this breaks down, if the Dow breaks down, you know, we're going to get a pretty big move here, right? So at least down to the trend line here at about 31,500. Uh, but targets on Bitcoin, do we go through all those? I don't think we did. But let's just swing back over to Bitcoin on the daily. Hey, look, there's uh, somebody down there waiting for price action at 18K. <laughs> That's not the right chart, by the way. Dun, 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 dun. Too many charts. Good problem to have these days. That's the inverted. Here's our rising. This might be worth checking out as well. Stick to this guy. All right, so if we do get the breakout on, we talked about this breaking falling wedge here, would we'll just move us back up into the daily liquidity pool. Uh, but if we break this cup and handle, here's the measurement on that cup right here, right? So the extrapolation on the cup out of the top of this here is going to move us to about 35K, right? And if we break this bullishly, like this huge thing bullishly, it's going to go even harder. Uh, I mean, we have a target up here at this whole... Uh, VRVP value gap at about $39,000. Okay. That seems very, very, very far uh, with the amount of spot buying right now. I think we come down before that happens. But like I said, we are in a very indifferent spot right now. But the next move is going to be big. Okay. Uh, that would bring us up to double top here, potentially SFP that $40,000, and take out some of these uh, former lows, right? I do want to talk real quick about a couple other things. Uh, I mean, fuddish news. Binance US was ordered by the courts to provide accounting statements. They said it was too complex and asked for an extension. They failed to even provide a statement after the extension. And this is on their supposedly compliant smaller US exchange, right? If they can't do this on the US stuff, um, I, they're never going to be able to prove it on, the, on the, the national exchange, right? So that's a little fuddy to me. It's CZ just tweets out that four... Like it's all FUD and, and none of it matters. It does. Okay. Uh, this as well. Federal Reserve is not requiring approval from ba state banks that can issue, hold, or transact crypto stable payments. Uh, we did have that bullish news of uh, PayPal issuing a stable coin on PAX. Um, I can't, I, I don't know how I feel about that. The good news is it'll probably onboard tons and tons of users and expose, this, expose them into crypto. Uh, not too long ago, they were saying they were going to find their users who use them as merchants, $2,500, if they find false statements or misleading statements or fake news on their web pages. Um, they backtracked that real quick. It destroyed the stock. The stock tanked like 40% after that. Um, but I, I, it's not a player I can trust, PayPal. Uh, over here from, oh, we covered Woo. Uh, we had the breaking in the Chinese data for exports are down 15%, 14.5%, when the expected was only about 9%. Uh, and imports are down 12.4% when the expected was about 56 So that is signs um, that inflation is not cooling, uh, that people are just out of money, right? Uh, they're not spending. Uh, so while inflation may cool, prices are still going up. I don't know if you've noticed that your gas pump here. Uh, gas is almost back to the high of that $4 uh, that we've experienced, what, about eight, nine months ago. And it, it doesn't show any signs of slowing uh, down, unfortunately, right? Uh, hopping over into, this is a monthly chart. Uh, I do think this is the one I wanted to talk about. 
Uh, but this is what everybody's talking about. So this is a monthly cup and handle. Uh, there is a very, very high target of about 52K if we do break out of this uh, to the upside. And that's the bull case when we're looking at you know, this ETF approval. That's why the indicators seem to be, at least on the uh, intraweekly timeframes, just uh, uncertain. Okay. Uh, if you look at the monthly volume down here on the bottom, it's rolling downhill. Okay. There's some ebbs and flows there, but we have not picked up spot buying in any way, shape, or form yet. Uh, it has not um, done us really any service. Uh, we do have a sell signal here on our, I believe that's the TC top and bottom finder indicator. Uh, the last time we did have a sell signal on this chart is actually tough to find, uh, but it's at the top of the market here, right? So that top of the market did drive us down pretty hard through a bunch of collapses and a 80% uh, drawdown. I'm no stretch of the imagination saying that's what's going to happen here. Um, but another sign of potential further pullback, okay? Uh, the other big thing here on this chart is the position of the current bull run. So here is... Let's see here. So that's the 19 run up. So we ran up from 4,000 to 2,000 or 15,000 on that bull run. We had the correction January of 20. We had the, um, the, well, actually it might be better. Look at this on the weekly. Yeah, this is a little bit easier to understand, right? So here is the last bull run before the previous one. So this is the 19 top. We pulled back. We had a bear rally uh, with about 100. And, that's a 100 percent run up from the bottom. Uh, one more further correction uh, actually led us into COVID, but COVID didn't start until we already started cl uh, correcting there, and then we ran up. So again, we have about a 100 percent bear rally. Uh, tend to have a little bit of a correction before the next halving. So coming down and retesting. You know, the, the bottom of this cup and handle at about 24, 25K, that is going to be my line in the sand for bullish price action on the weekly, monthly. It would need to bounce from there and come back to the upside. Uh, or we're going to get, you know, pretty, uh, pretty sketched more to the downside. But a correction is not going to be out of the usual here. Does not make me uh, saying the sky's falling or anything like that. It's just a healthy correction. Okay. Uh, other than that, I'm just holding tight, man. Just sitting tight here on price action. You know, TC top and bottom fighter here on the whale on the money flow exhaustion here. Looks like it's coming down. Um, you know, volume has not been any kind of a crazy spike here. We're not getting any uh, liquidations. You know, big liquidations on the daily candles here at all. We're right in the middle of this value range again. So you know, something like this here to bounce around in uh, for a bit. And time will tell. Uh, overnight here, we're going to leave it into the hands of the Asian session like we always do. And uh, I'll see you at New York Open in Discord or the rest of the evening here. Don't forget to hop in over there. I appreciate you hanging out. I think we went 28 minutes here. Uh, but have a great evening, guys, and I'll catch you later.